Welcome back RC Tankers, are you a fan of the Leopard 2? I am. In today's video we are taking a look at Henlong's 1 16th scale RC version of this Leopard 2A6 main battle tank. It arrives RTR, which means right out of the box it's ready to run. We're going to plug in 6 AA batteries into our radio and conduct our initial 2 minute test. We just want to verify that all of our functions are working properly before we move on to the next step. Now as an RTR, the tank includes cosmetic accessory parts, BBs, this is smoke oil, which you need to check in the description below to see if your area can accept shipping of that type of liquid. If not, the glycerin is available in local areas. Now these cosmetic accessory parts assemble a lot like any plastic model. You're going to clip these parts out, it takes about an hour, and we install them onto the tank via pre-drilled holes. There's no drilling that we need to do, we simply clip them out and press fit them in. In fact, I didn't use any glue throughout this entire tank, as you see here, just pushing each of the individual parts in. The rear bustle bin, while a bit soft in detail, clips in just nicely, and now I move the turret to the side to install the very, very detailed surface tools and other details um, that really make this engine deck stand out on this Leopard. If we were to glue down a part, it would probably be these plastic handles for the side, these side access bins. Reason being, if you plan on driving through brush or bushes, uh, these would be the more susceptible to being pulled off by debris. The smoke grenade launchers installed just, uh, just as easy as everything else. Importantly, I think one of the advantages of Henlong's instruction manuals is that they are very clearly labeled. What part, what sprue, what number, and where does it go? So very clear diagrams make this a very simple, simple process. Now we've finished, it took about, us about an hour and we can move on to just an overview of the tank before we take it outside. I really do enjoy the paint application of this three-tone NATO scheme. Uh, I do like how these road wheel caps sort of complete the look overall. And this is the upgrade version with plastic tracks and metal suspension arms and steel gears on the inside. Once satisfied, we can move to the final step, which is applying DAR decals. These are adhesive vinyl decals. You do not want to use water on these guys. These are not water slides. They're simply peel and stick, burnish them with the back of your fingernail, as you see me doing here, and gently remove the clear plastic film. Now a tip for installing these flexible tow cables is you want to twist them towards the tank once or twice as you see me doing. This pre-tensions the cable and allows it to sit more flush up against the rear hull of the tank. Henlong went the simpler way here with using decals to depict the tail lights, but enough of that, let's take it outside and see how it runs. The K6 series MFCB inside the tank allows very smooth proportional control. We can traverse the turret slowly but quickly, elevate and depress the main gun, and drive the tank itself as scale as we like or as quickly as we'd like. It performed really well on dr any dry surface that I could throw at it up to 40 degree inclines. We get a good look here at the metal suspension arms that are pre-installed, which is a nice bit of uh, additional upgrade out of the box. I like that Henlong provided this, and they give additional durability to the tank. This is me holding the top of the turret just to try and get it to spin out of it. There are three settings of recoil here, and I prefer the smallest setting. turn 
<laughs> parallel parking there. And uh, I really do, really do love this Leopard too. Back in the studio after the first run of the Henlong 116 scale Leopard 2A6, and I really like this tank. This is Henlong's longest tank, uh, their widest tank, and one of their tallest tanks. So if you're looking for a big, big brute to fill your mantle or fill your display case, the 2A6 is it. There are a few other elements of this tank that I really like. I love the surface detail on the tank. We have these molded textured non-skid pads, just like the real tank. This is missing on Henlong's Abrams, incidentally, but I like that they model it here in the 2A6. Uh, this model finds a nice balance between scale fidelity and, and access. It isn't so complex, say like the T90, where there are so many plastic parts that uh, it takes an hour and a half to put together. This one sort of goes together in about 20 or 30 minutes and still really looks the part. From any angle, I can't see I can't see an angle that I don't love on this tank. From the distinctive arrow-shaped spaced armor uh, on the front of the turret to the long 120 millimeter Rheinmetall gun to the back between our stowage bins and our sort of our light setup here. I think all of this looks really, really good. The tank having Hunlong standard battery bay, it's also perfect for upgrading. Other than the T72 and the T90, there are other tanks can accommodate 2S3000, 2S4000, even 2S5000 batteries if you really want to extend your driving time. I think most people will get away with just buying a couple extra spares and happy with the 20 minute runtime or so that I'm seeing on this um, fully stock version that's called the upgrade version. For 2019 what that means is the upgrade version includes plastic tracks, uh, plastic drive wheel, idler wheel, and road wheels. However, we see here our idler mount and all of our suspension arms are metal. And also internally we have a steel gearbox instead of zinc alloy. I'm happy that Henlong has done away with zinc alloy for their upgrade tanks. They've now brought the steel gears from the professional versions down to the upgrade versions. So for someone looking to just buy the upgrade version, it would actually be my recommendation. If you don't need your tank to weigh five, six, seven pounds, if you don't need the metal tracks and the metal wheels, um, this upgrade version is really the version that, for someone like me, I really like. Out of the box, the paint apps look great. It could probably stand to do with a bit of detailing and a little bit of weathering. It's a great base for that. But, um, but I think as it comes out of the box, it's a really excellent model. Now, who is this model not for? Every tank's not perfect, and I think the Leopard size in this case actually works against it in, in some instances. If you're the kind of person who actually does not want a two foot long tank <laughs> sitting on your mantle, uh, or you don't want to have to transport something that large, or let's say you're a younger tanker uh, who just doesn't want to have something uh, very large to move around, I'd recommend some of Henlong's smaller tanks. So this is, for example, just for a quick size comparison, this is the Henlong 1 16th scale Panzer IV F2. Now, those, these, though these are both German tanks and they're the same scale, we can see just how different they are in size. Uh, the Leopard 2 is easily twice as long as the Panzer IV. So, bigger isn't always better in the tanking world. I can completely see the advantage of a lighter, smaller, more maneuverable tank. It still has the big battery bay there on the back. And, um, yeah, just be mindful. The Leopard's a big tank for better or for worse. The last thing I didn't really like about the Leopard 2A6 is the decals for the rangefinder and the CITV. They're rendered in a blue decal for some reason. The unit markings are fine enough and they look very attractive. However, the rangefinder door, like Henlong's Abrams, is molded in the closed position. Really wish they'd modify that so it was opened. Any modeler with 20 or 30 minutes and a uh, and a hobby saw can open that up, but it's something to be mindful of. I've chosen, as you see, to not apply those blue decals just because they seem to, they just didn't match with the overall look of the tank. But really, other than that, it's hard to find a lot of faults with the model. I could be really picky and say that the bustle bins 
this mesh isn't the best. It's not sort of Tamiya. Um, I could probably nitpick some of the fit in the finish. There's a slight sort of quarter of a millimeter gap here on the arrowhead armor. But other than that, it's very, very difficult to find things about this tank, which I do not like. So highly recommended for me. Let us know in the comments, what do you think about the Leopard 2A6 as a modern main battle tank? How does it stack up to something like the T90 or say the Abrams? The big three, as I call them. We should get a Challenger 2 in here as well. Uh, which tank do you like the best? What do you love about the Leopard 2A6? What do you want to see from Henlong in the future? Let us know. Like, share, subscribe, all the usual fun stuff. And we hope to see you in the next video. Fire away.